Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I have a very special unboxing that I'm really, really excited about for the official Neopets tarot deck. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who don't know anything about Neopets, it is an online uh, virtual pet website that has a ton of different games. It was created in, I think, 1999 or something around then and it sort of reached its peak popularity in the mid 2000s but it is still going <laughs> and um I still log on and play most every day <laughs> basically uh anyone who was a young person or like somewhere around my age in the mid 2000s probably knows a thing or two about Neopets and perhaps even had their own account um I I am a big Neopets fan, and I have been for a long time. Like many Neopets fans, I've had my ups and downs with with Neopets over the years and with the, um, the changes that it's gone through, but, you know, it is still near and dear to my heart. Some kids were like Pokemon kids, some kids were Digimon kids, and I was a Neopets kid. <laughs> so I kind of thought that my days of Neopets merchandise would have been over when Limited 2 closed down and I no longer had easy access to Neopets plushies. <laughs> um, but I found out um, that as part of the current Neopets team's sort of renewed efforts to um, create Neopets merchandise, they created this tarot deck. And it actually looks pretty damn good, if I do say so myself. Like, they didn't half-ass this. This isn't a Liminal Eleven style, you know, cash grab pip deck. This is a fully illustrated cash grab tarot deck. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I suppose that this has proven that not even I am immune to branded consumerism. <laughs> but... I'm not going to talk about that. I am just going to enjoy the feeling, enjoy the memories, and talk a little bit about Neopets, flip through the deck, and just, like, have some fun. <laughs> I definitely got this as kind of like a collector's item, one of those things where it's like, I couldn't not have it, you know? I guess now I understand how some people feel about certain um, Liminal Eleven decks, certain whatever, Disney decks or something. It's like you just kind of, you, you have it because because the, the characters mean a lot to you and you just are, you know, it's part of your fandom. And it's a little weird to call Neopets a fandom, but I guess it is. So that's what I'm... That's what I'm talking about. Um, by the way, this background is the official um, play mat for the Neopets trading card game. This is unassociated with the tarot deck, but I just thought, you know, I've got to pull it out. I've got to have it. And on the sides here, we have um, my, some of my favorite characters, Jiron, Meridel Knight, and uh, Kayla, also from Meridel. Um just to unbox with us. I will um, try to give... Okay, let me just real quick give a little bit of a brief background on, on like, the lore of Neopets, because I'm definitely going to be going into Neopets lore <laughs> in a way that might be kind of nonsensical or intimidating for people who um, are, are not familiar with Neopets lore. Basically, um, the game itself is, uh, like, the, the setting, I guess. The Neopets setting is it takes place on this, um, Earth-like place called Neopia, and basically there are a whole bunch of different worlds, as they're called, which are just, like, different, um, cities, areas, uh, of the, of the Neopets map of the game. Um, and each of them is very clearly, like, <laughs> um, I would say representing a different part of of human world like it's kind of inspired by it's not all in in the same timeline like they have simultaneously like the medieval world which is Meridel alongside like um uh the uh Virtupet's space station which is 
super sci-fi and futuristic. So it all just kind of coexists, and each world uh, has its own characters and has its own plot lines, and they're often shared, like, it, it, lore about the world is often shared in site-wide plots, which are basically just activities that um, the users will participate in on, like, a group level. And then, of course, there's all of, like, the side events on the website. There's, like, side merchandise, like, other video games and things that are derived from Neopets, um, the trading card game, all of this stuff. And they all of these characters kind of contribute to the overall lore of Neopets. And these characters are the ones who are represented in this tarot deck. Okay, I think you probably get the idea. <laughs> I'll have plenty to talk about as I'm opening up here. Um, this is the box. It's a very tall box. I imagine it's because uh, it has a book in it. I mean, I know it has a book. It says right here, includes an illustrated guidebook. I guess we'll just read the back. Uh, honestly, like whenever I'm watching deck flip throughs and things, I just skip through this part. But you never know what people might want. Um, the old meets the new in the official Neopets tarot deck featuring 78 unique original card portraits based on the right away tarot style. This deck is perfect both for tarot beginners or experienced readers who want to revel in the nostalgic mem memories of this beloved universe. Featuring a full cast of Neopets species and a wide range of heroes and villains from the land of Neopia, each gorgeously illustrated card tells a story that will help you guide your... that will help guide you in your search for universal understanding. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um... On the cover here is a sorceress named Giordana, and um, just like apologies in advance, pronunciation is really hard. <laughs> so uh, some of these might not be the official pronunciation, but yeah. Um, a sorceress named Gi Giordana who, um, you know what, I'm pretty sure that this is one of the cards, so I'll just wait till we get to her card here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's put the box... Here are the backs. Very, very cool. They've got this little gilding with all of the classic Neopets stars. Uh, this particular shape of star is like the Neopets brand star. <laughs> um, we'll set these down for a sec. This is the guidebook. It's pretty smooth. It's like hardcover. Holy crap. It's it's hardcover and it's bound like an actual book. That is cute. Neopets tarot card interpretation guide. <laughs> Before you start any reading, make sure to give your deck a good shuffle. Clear your mind and bring your focus to your question. Yep, this definitely seems like a very classic uh, little, little white book or thick blue book in this case. Um, yep, reversed cards, one card reading, three cards spread. <laughs> They got the fucking Celtic cross in here. Should I be swearing in a video about Neopets? <laughs> got the majors and then have like a little little picture and then a description of each one. Um, the original and reversed. And then I guess it just gives a description of like why they used each character on each card, which is really cool. Okay, I can't flip through this too much. Oh, look, it's got this little bookmark! <laughs> that is so cute! Okay, I can't flip through this too much because it's going to reveal the cards. And I want to I wanna wait on those. Okay, here we go. Let me flip this back over. And here is the Fool card. <laughs> I am going to zoom in. A little bit because I want these guys to be nice and take up the whole screen okay <laughs> so this is the fool card now um, this is very appropriate this character is a court jester in the medieval world of Meridel and uh, there's sort of a game where you play as this court jester I, I suppose you know these aren't all like flash games or or sort of keyboard action based video game style games a lot of them are text based which i think is part of why i really like neopets cuz i really like text based games to be perfectly honest um or like you know monkey island style adventure games games where you have to take notes zork you know <laughs> i really like like text based games so anyway um 
so in this game, you basically play as this guy and you are trying to tell a joke to the grumpy King Skarl to make him laugh. And if you do, then you get an avatar, which is like a special prize that you get to use on the uh, chat boards. And yeah, that's like totally appropriate. He's juggling negs. <laughs> negs are another Neopets staple, um, which are, you know, they're eggs. <laughs> but Neopets, they're Neopets eggs. Yeah. This is genuinely, like, really well done artwork. They definitely hired people who got the look done very well. It is sort of the... It is in the modern style of Neopets, which is fine. Uh, like, I'm a little bit older, so I have sort of some of the more... I have a little bit more fondness for some of the jankier art. <laughs> um, but, you know... This is this is great. This is this is fabulous. Very um o official, you know. Um okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, oh man. Now this is really cool. This genuinely looks like an image that you would find on one of the Neopets trading cards. Like I have this one right here. They look very you know, very good together. Um this character is I want to say Salazar or Salazar. I can't totally remember, but he is a sorcerer in Brightvale, which is basically Brightvale is like the Renaissance world. And yes, they literally have like a medieval world and then a Renaissance world. And the two kings are brothers and they kind of feud with each other where Skarl is sort of the grumpy, you know, war hardened king of Meridel. And then you have the brother, his brother Hagen, who is known as like this, very wise king, um, but presumably, like, he sort of has all the luxuries of not being in a war-torn state. <laughs> um, yeah. Really, really cool. Excellent character choice, and yeah, I actually really like this art. They even have this coin right in the front is sort of blurred, like, they have, what is that called? Um, uh, you know, it's like camera focus where it makes it look like the camera is focusing on him. It's really cool. Okay, cool. Um, now I don't totally remember her name, but this is a character who is part of a, it's called the Order of the Red Ursum. Ursum is this, uh, little snake guy. He is a pet pet. Pet pets are pets that you give to your Neopets. <laughs> and yeah, there are also pet pet pets, which are pets for your pet pets. <laughs> uh, give you a little taste of some of the humor of Neopets, which has probably honestly like, uh, influenced my, um, influenced my humor in more ways than I'd like to admit. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically the Order of the Red Ursum is like a group of magicians that are uh, part of an ongoing battle for um, like uh, administrative control of a particular site, um, which is just overall the area is known as the Battlegrounds now. Um, there are many groups that are fighting for it. Um, so this is interesting. I don't actually know that much about her as a character. Um, but, you know, aesthetically, it certainly works. And I think she's definitely got that cheekiness that I love in a high priestess. <laughs> and, like, naturally, of course, Queen Fiora has to be the empress. Like, who else would you even put for this? Queen Fiora is, like, a Neopets classic. She is queen of the fairies. Um, the fairies are these only the only human-like uh, characters in Neopets, save a few exceptions. Um, and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much her, that's pretty much her role. Um, I think it's very appropriate. Fairyland is, is where many fairies live and the official area that she rules over, which used to be in the clouds, like literally a cloud land that was suspended over the ocean and over the lands and would sort of move, but, um, it got it it crashed to the earth or you know it crashed to the ground it crashed to neopia in a plot um man like a long time ago now <laughs> it feels like it was just yesterday uh so yeah very very appropriate <laughs>
And here we have the Emperor. This is King Altador. Altador is their Greek slash Roman inspired area. <laughs> and King Altador is definitely known as like the just but perhaps gruff king. Fun fact is that I kind of know him best through a side shoot of Neopets. There was a game uh, called uh, Neopets the Darkest Fairy, and it was for play PlayStation 2. And I really love that game. Meridel in general is my favorite world, and it takes place primarily in Meridel. Um, or, you know, with a character from Meridel, and it's, it's just a really, that's kind of like my favorite part of it, and King Altador features heavily in that game, and it's just like, I really like, I mean, I, you couldn't have a Neopets deck without these classic characters. Um, I'm honestly like a little bit on the fence about about some of the new characters that they've decided to include, like like this um, figure from the Order of the Red Ursa is def definitely from sort of a more recent character. But, you know, it's like they did tell you up front that it's sort of a mix of old and new. Um, and I suppose there are probably a lot of people who experienced Neopets just like a little bit later than I did, and so they have more fondness for some of the more recent characters. So I, I'm not complaining, just kind of pointing it out. Okay, this is Anshu, who is, um, I can't entirely remember his role, but I know that he was in a plot, um, okay, so Shenku is their area that's very, like, East Asian inspired, and, um, the plot that this guy was part of was basically like a whodunit mystery that took place on a flying cloud ship. And so it was like this, it, it sort of looked like a junk ship, if you know what that looks like. Uh, and it was, it was flying around, um, doing some sort of survey. I don't totally remember, <laughs> but the whole plot line was basically like a big giant collaborative whodunit to figure out which of the crew members pushed the, uh, the cartographer overboard. And he was one of the suspects, but, um, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess, spoiler alert, anyone who has anything to do with Neopets already knows, and anybody who doesn't probably doesn't care. So, um, it, uh, he was not the, uh, culprit that was Bonju the chef. And <laughs> I guess, uh, and now, now he runs a shop in Shenghu, which I believe is the, um, like, Herbal Remedies shop. I think that this kind of works. I admittedly, I feel like this is mostly an aesthetic choice, like, um, rather than like a character choice, because I mean, he's like an old man with a big old, uh, mustache and, you know, he just like looks like a higher fan. I, isn't this like throne that he's sitting on super cool though? It looks like scarab shaped, cr uh, throne. It's so cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. So the characters here are Jazan and Nabil, and they were part of a lost desert plot, and that is their Egypt-themed uh, area, ancient Egypt-themed area. Um, and basically the story was that he was part of a neighboring city called Quazala, which had been completely destroyed by pestilence and and broken down and all this stuff and it, it was due to a curse that was placed on um on the city on his people and so um in order to break the curse he had to go and uh get married basically and like marry somebody with royal blood and so he goes out and he marries not her <laughs> he he attempts to marry a uh, princess amira but she is not interested has no part of it and then through a very long plot um Nabil here is is like a a thief street urchin Aladdin style kind of character and um she ends up falling in love with uh falling in love with Jazan because she um turns out that she also had some royal blood and so like it technically counted and the curse was lifted so i think this was a, this is sort of interesting um because I feel like this is like the happy ending of the whole story where you very easily could have had Princess Amira involved in it. Um, so I think this is kind of 
it's kind of sweet. It's like making a choice that is um, almost more more balanced and and not necessarily what is the prescribed choice, but it can still work out for you. Definitely interesting there. Uh, this is the Cyadrake's Sire Gaze, which is the name of this ship, and that's the ship that I was just talking about with the Hierophant. Um, yeah, really cool. Very appropriate, I'd say. <laughs> okay, so um, when I saw this card, I knew that I had to get this deck no matter what. <laughs> and I haven't seen very many of the cards, but I think that this was one of the ones that they used in, like, advertisements and stuff for it, which makes sense, because this character, Illison, is one of the very main major characters in Neopets lore. As you can see, she's right here as well. Uh, she is an earth fairy. She lives in the forest of the medieval world, and she features very prominently in many, many plots. Uh, and she is basically known as just, like, the very kind druid style character. And the figure that she is consoling here is a Noil, which is Lion backwards, and is one of my favorites because lions are my big favorite. And so um, the Noil is, is a pet pet. And uh, obviously, like, again, it's probably an aesthetic choice, but I think that it, I think that it's just really cute and it totally works. Oh, man. Oh my god. I'm gonna sound like such a dork this entire time. Okay. I do not know this character right off the bat. And I have to assume that he is a major character because we haven't had any just like default Neopets that haven't, that are unnamed, you know? So I'm just gonna flip through the guidebook real quick and see what his name is. Uh, Bukaru. Served his time with Coltzan and is, and now it's time to focus on his, himself. Bukar, oh, this is so handy. Okay, so here in the guidebook, um, I'm just sort of reading the the brief description here, and it doesn't have a whole lot about the the. I mean, it has a little bit about the the sense of the character, but I still wasn't sure where he came up. And then here it says in parentheses where in the lore the character came up. So Bukaru appeared in NeoQuest 2 in the Lost Desert. He's described as cranky and old. <laughs> okay, NeoQuest 2. I love NeoQuest. A lot of Neopets uh, players really hate the NeoQuest games, but they're basically like, um, they are, you know, in-browser HTML games that um, are basically... <laughs> It's sort of like Pokemon, you know, it's a quest where you go through and you fight different things and it's it's sort of like Pokemon meets Dungeons and Dragons. Um I love it. It it's one of my favorites, honestly. I love the stories, I love the lore, so um I'm not surprised that I did not recognize him though, because NeoQuest has a lot of little one off characters who just exist as a shopkeeper and you don't really interact with them very much, so I guess that's probably that's probably where he is. Makes sense for the hermit, I guess. This is the Wheel of Excitement. Now, Neopets' wheels are basically, they're, you know, these wheels where you pay a certain amount of the in-game currency Neo points to spin the wheel and potentially get more out of it. And you can win rare items from them. And uh, yeah, they're def definitely a staple. I think that the Wheel of Excitement is an appropriate one for the Wheel of Fortune because it is sort of the... Um, it's one of the most iconic, except perhaps the Wheel of Monotony, and why I say that is because each wheel has a certain spin time, where you, you literally watch the wheel spin, and the Wheel of Monotony spins for two hours. Two real-world hours it spins, and you have to leave the tab open. <laughs> and when I was a kid, I was always trying to find ways to, like, cheese the game so that it wouldn't... Um, like I wouldn't have to actually use up all of my computer time waiting for the Wheel of Monotony to spin. And it was really special because you could get, uh, you could get a paintbrush from it. And the paintbrushes are like special items that can change the color of your Neopets. So as you can see, like red, yellow, white, all of the Neopets have different colors, which allow you to, you know, give them a different theme and a different look. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, a, a very, um, 
you know, classic easy choice for the Wheel of Fortune, I'd say. Okay. So this is Justice, and the character depicted here is the Battle Fairy. Um, and she is basically the fairy who is the ruler of the Battle Dome, which is, you know, a a fighting game where you can train up your Neopets and then they can fight other Neopets or in-game NPC villains in feats of strength and whatever. Um, so, you know, it's like a fighting mini game, you know, aspect of the site. I don't know that she as a character is especially oriented with justice. Like she definitely has the look for justice. Um, they added the, uh, they added the, uh, uh, the scales. I don't think she usually has these. One thing that's a, like a l slightly disappointing is that the the l smaller images here are very pixelated for some reason. I think it's just like poorly scaled. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't really matter. I never look at these things anyway. Just so you know, it says, um, Athea the Battle Fairy confronts the viewer. Her expression is clear and determined. Engaged in a battle stance. Um, two pillars showing all are equal under the law. Athea is here to weigh the evidence and give her verdict. Um, so she is, she, yeah, she runs the weapon shop. She teaches abilities. I suppose it kind of makes sense if you think of her as basically like the Athena, which makes sense. Al a Athea, Athena, like she's very clearly Athena inspired, but I think that, um, she seems to be more emphasized on the war and fighting aspect of Athena, um, so, like, I don't know. I guess it's fine. You know, I don't know that I have someone else who I'd be like, oh, well, they should have picked this. Um, you know. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, the Hanged Man. So this is... This character is known as the discarded blue Grundo plushie of prosperity. And basically it's like a mini game where every day you can go and talk to this abandoned plushie, um, who was abandoned on a tree in fairyland. Um, it used to be abandoned on a cloud in fairyland before it fell <laughs> and potentially get, um, some, in-game currency or boons or negatives, you know, it's, it's known as a daily. And there are a lot of activities that are known as dailies, which are basically like you can go and play it once a day and potentially get something out of it. So, you know, it's the, 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 the plushie itself does not, it's sort of unknown whether the plushie itself is actually sentient or not, <laughs> but it definitely is hanging there and it has been for a long time. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Now we're getting to the real goth shit. <laughs> this is Lord Derrigan and Derrigan is the evil side <laughs> of Meridel. Basically, um, Derrigan is another floating castle, but this one is floating on dark clouds and it is the very classic dark purple and green Disney villain. We're here to fight Meridel for no reason kind of <laughs> thing. Like, admittedly, I, I have no problem with saying that some of the Neopets lore is, um, not the most elaborate or <laughs> anything like that. But yeah, so he is the the evil villain who um, features very prominently in many of the medieval quest um, portions. He's in Battle for Meridel and Champions of Meridel and a lot of Meridel parts. So, um, and he sort of has a large fan base surrounding him. <laughs> Uh, and I, he, I believe that he would probably be, he was probably chosen as death because I think that he also has a redemption arc, um, which sort of goes to like the rebirth ideas of death. So, you know, it's not, it's not bad. It's certainly not that like, oh, he is the Grim Reaper and that's why they put him on the death card. I don't know that Neopets has a Grim Reaper. Okay, this is Judea, who is the owner of the cooking pot. And the cooking pot is an activity where you can go and bring two items and uh, 
she will fuse them together into a single item, <laughs> which is a fun thing. And I know there was like a huge plot called the Mystery Island plot. And um, it's like, you know, a very, you know, jungly island kind of uh, kind of area is Mystery Island. And um, there was like a whole plot that was way before my time. It was like 2001 or 2002 or something. <laughs> um <laughs> And that's, I think, where she featured most prominently. But yeah, you know, cooking, blending, that works. This is Dr. Sloth. <laughs> and Dr. Sloth is on the Virtue Pets space station. He is basically this evil alien who had enslaved these this alien species, um, which are the Grundos. And uh, some of the Grundos work for him in a sense, and, like, are, are for him. And then there are other Grundos who lead part of a resistance against Dr. Seleth, and I think that's kind of a, you know, an appropriate and interesting dichotomy they have here between, like, the Grundo who is happy to serve him and very excited even though he's oppressing, you know, the, the species, <laughs> oppressing the Grundos, and one who is probably going to join the resistance. <laughs> um Dr. Sloth is definitely, like, has a huge fan base. He had to feature somewhere, and I can't think of a better place than the devil. Gotta say, like, these cards are very nice. They are smooth. They are, like, they're not, they're matte. They're, like, buttery. You know, they're, they're, everything that people like, you know, ends up a little thick for the whole deck, but that's just a personal preference. Okay, so remember way back in the High Priestess when I was talking about the uh, the Bori who is part of the Order of the Red Ursum? Uh, this is the battleground that they are all fighting over. This is like the thing that was uncovered and discovered that everybody wants control over. And now it is a bi-weekly activity where you choose a side to fight for and then participate in battle dome fights to uh, regain control of the tower for a certain amount of time. Again, like, this is a, one of those slightly newer things that I don't have a particular fondness for, but, you know, it's certainly, it's certainly part of the Neopets lore. Um, I, what were these, what were those runes called? These runes on it, I think, I can't remember what they were from, but I know that there was a Neopets item called, like, Secrets of Dirigible Construction, and I think that was part of it, um. Yeah, Neopets items are, are a big part of the game, too. Okay, I believe this is Sibylla, who, um, pardon me if I got her name wrong, but basically she is part of that Altador Greek-Roman plot, uh, where she is known as the First Risen. She is one of the guardians of Altador, and she exists as a uh, she has a constellation. The Neopets basically has a set of constellations, um, that featured very prominently in the Altador plot, which, uh, interestingly, most of the plots are time-sensitive. Like, they are, you know, group contribution plots that you have to have been on the site at a given time to really participate in. You can sort of go back and read some of the lore, but you can't really do many of the activities, except for the Altador plot. You can do that any time. Um, I swear to God that, like, me flipping through this deck is just me showing off all of my completely useless Neopets trivia knowledge. <laughs> but yeah, this is a good one. Good, good character. And definitely she is known as like the first risen and she definitely is like the beacon of hope for Altador. Um, so yeah, totally, totally good. This is the wise old Norbu. Does not officially have a name. Norbu is the name of the species, by the way, which are like these, um, llama type type characters and um he basically runs the Shenku Lunar Observatory. He started the Cyadrix gaze plot with the flying ship and went to he he observes the moon phases and basically has part of a um as part of a daily activity he shows you this map where it has uh, the moon in a particular place relative to the Earth, or Neopia, relative to the sun. And you're supposed to, using that diagram, tell from 
the Earth what phase the moon would be in, which is very interesting. <laughs> this moon does not look a lot like Kralidor. Kralidor is the official name of the moon in, um, in Neopets, uh, but it's very pretty, so that's cool. This isn't me, like, being nerdy nippy, like, um, excuse me, that's not Kralidor. <laughs> okay. I totally can't remember her name. I want to say it's, like, um, Nubia or something. So I'm just gonna read my... Nuria. Nuria. Read my cheat sheet. She was part of the Lost Desert plot. As you can probably tell, she is, like, the desert fairy, um... And she didn't have a very prominent place, but she sort of disappears as a character sometimes because a lot of people collect the individual fairies. A lot of people like all of the individual fairies as characters. And so she, you know, is just one of those fairies that has stuff associated with her. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking... Okay, <laughs> so this is part of the superhero arc, as you can probably tell. This is Judge Hog is his fucking name. He is a Mohog, which are based, you know, that's the species. They do not all look like that. <laughs> but, you know, he is part of basically like the Justice League who tries and defeats these evildoers. Um, and this... When he, I don't know this one off the top of my head, but this one here is the Pant Devil, who is a notorious thief who can l steal items from your inventory in the game, which, uh, you know, a notoriously hated character for that reason. <laughs> I, I feel like this is another one of those perhaps surface level interpretations of judgment, like, okay, you know, ju defeating the evildoers, not necessarily, like, lifting the veil, seeing things for how they really are. I think perhaps Kauvara might have been better. Um, she also would have made a good high priestess. I mean, I'm a little disappointed they didn't include Kauvara as the high priestess. Maybe they have her somewhere else, but anyway. And this is the space fairy who, um... I don't know that she's featured too heavily in plots. I guess she was probably part of the Virtue Pets plot as basically like the main hero um, to the antagonist of Dr. Sloth and the Devil. And then on the sides here, we just have different species of Neopets in each of the basic colors. So Neo, as I mentioned before, Neopets have paintbrushes where you can paint them different colors and they come in four basic colors, red, yellow, blue, and green. And so when you are creating a Neopet for the first time, those are the colors you can choose from. Very classic, you know, representative of sort of the whole um, basic foundation, I guess, of Neopets colors. I, yeah, this is quite pretty, actually. I really, really like this one. <laughs> And presumably they just picked these uh, different species. This is a Mincy, an Irie, a Cougar, and a Cow. K-A-U, excuse me very much. Um, <laughs> and I think that they probably just picked those for sort of the aesthetic resemblance to the lion and the human and the eagle and the uh, Taurus bull. Which is fine. <laughs> just pointing it out. Okay, so... Um, Starting with the Pentacles suit here, uh, this is the Ace of Pentacles. This is a wishing well, and uh, it is an actual place or, you know, activity in Neopets where you can go and give a certain amount of Neo points in ho and wish for an item, and then uh, it selects a certain number of people to uh, grant, grant their wishes, and then you get the item in return. Um, yeah, cute, solid. <laughs> they have the classic RWS. I kind of like the really small uh, pentacle in relation to the large chunky hand. Something about that just feels very cute. This is Edna, who is the in the the haunted woods, which is as you can probably expect, like the spooky Halloween world. <laughs> um, and uh, you can you can do quests for her, where basically she is constantly working on new spells and. Um, you can do quests where you fetch items for her in her spells. So, um, and the 
Okay, so so that's Edna in the front here. And then in the background, these are two other characters that you can use to get quests, where the this is the esophagor who wants to know certain information, and this is the brain tree who has certain information. And um, so the esophagor being unable to visit the brain tree himself, like these these two are rooted to the ground, you basically act as a messenger between the brain tree and the esophagor. Um, yes, oh, and in the background, by the way, this is just like the castle of Elif Thade, who is the anagram master of the Haunted Woods, <laughs> just so you know. Um, like, here's a, here's a pop quiz. What does Elif Thade, uh, rearrange to? What is it an anagram of? <laughs> Comment down below if you know. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think that works for working together. They're both very prominent quest uh, seekers, and um, you sort of need to work with both of these two. And um, yeah, it, it works. And Edna, again, is like a very classic character. Oh, look! Oh, wait. Okay, so the three accidentally came out of order, so don't worry about that. Um, this is Cincy, who is the... Uh, she is basically a, a, a game master in uh, Meridel, and she has a game that... I think it's basically like a version of Othello, which is that game where you... Um, you know, flip the the sides to either the black side or the white side, and you try to get the most of one. And she, she it's like a puzzle game where you have to flip these coins um, to all show the same thing, either swords or they have these gloves, or I think blank is another option. Shapeshifter is a really fun game. I suck at it. It is so hard for me to to understand the way that those patterns work, but I love her as a character. She is so cute. She is like this cute little trickster. Um, very, very appropriate and just playful and, and great for representing the, the two of pentacles and sort of the constant movement, uh, is because they're constantly flipping back and forth. I love it. And then the three of pentacles. <laughs> Okay, so the Four of Pentacles, uh, this is the Nurkmid machine, and this little star thing is what the Aisha, this character, is holding. That is a Nurkmid, and Nurkmids are basically like alien currency on the moon. <laughs> they are a special currency that is used by these characters, and they have basically like a vending machine where you can put in these Nurkmids and potentially get something cool out of it, but that is, you know, gambling is a very large part of Neo pets culture. <laughs> and Nurkmids are notoriously expensive and unusual and rare, and so the character in the front here is basically, seems to be deciding whether they want to um, risk this, risk putting their Nurkmid into the machine for the chance at something valuable coming out. Um, <laughs> very, very cute. Very interesting for the Four of Pentacles. I think it's cool to kind of see the actual decision-making process, you know what I mean? Yeah, really cool. I love it. <laughs> okay, so now we finally have a spot from Terrania. Terrania is the prehistoric world with all the dinosaurs and stuff, and uh, this thing in the background here is the giant omelette. Uh, which is basically a place where you can get free food for your Neopets. Part of the game is that you have to feed your Neopets, in theory. Like, they won't ever actually die or anything, but, you know, you're supposed to feed your Neopets. <laughs> and uh, the omelet is a place where once a day you can go and grab a piece of the omelet, which is basically like just some sort of giant creature comes by and lays an egg and it gets cooked into an omelet on the uh, on the hot rocks and a bunch of people come forward and, like... Um, flavor it with different things, <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, it definitely is a good substitute for the church thing, I think. I think it's a little hard to pull off storytelling-wise, um, you know, but it's, it's good. The fucking beads of sweat on the characters in the front here, like, this is so cartoony, very, very 
classic, you know, classic cartoony, classic Neopets style. Uh, for the Six of Pentacles, we have the Money Tree, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, like, you can go and people donate items and they show up beneath the Money Tree and then other people can try and grab them. And um, this is definitely known as, like, the benevolent, kindly character who is here to try and help all of the poor Neopets so that they can have Neopoints to buy food. Um I don't know the lore behind this Jub Jub in the front here. So this this little fluffy character is a Jub Jub, and he's surrounded by these little lizard pet pets called Scamanders. I don't know if that has a special meaning. Um, probably does. <laughs> okay, so this is a little edgy. Um, <laughs> so let me give you a little bit of the lore behind this one. Um... So, one of the annual events on Neopets is the Altador Cup, which is a site-wide event where everybody participates in a few sports-like games, and it's sort of meant to be like, uh, you know, it's a sport, sort of like soccer or whatever, and, um, you know, at the, by the end of it, then whichever team had the most points, there's like a very complicated scoring system that has changed that no one really knows how it works, but at the end of it, then... Uh, you know, basically, like, you join the team for the world that you like best. I always join Meridel, and uh, with any luck, then they will win at the end. And there is a lot of controversy among site players, because there are people who really get obsessed with the Altador Cup, and that's the only reason that they're on the site. Like, they literally come back in June, play the same game thousands and thousands of times to rack up points for their team, and then that's it. <laughs> and if memory serves, there was one year where the ha the this is the Haunted Woods team, and there was one year where the Haunted Woods team um did not Okay, so the Haunted Woods team won, but it was people were not happy about it because there seemed to be a lot of issues of potentially cheating, potential bots participating. Um I like, basically, people were very, very unhappy about it, and it sort of started this very big... Well, not started, but it was part of this very big controversy that the Altador Cup has always done. I mean, it would be hard to have a Neopets tarot deck where you are trying to represent all these different aspects from the site and not include something for the Altador Cup, but uh, pretty much anything that you show regarding the Altador Cup, especially, like, the victors of the Altador Cup, is going to be... <laughs> very dramatic um like like very cheeky i guess it feels so it feels very cheeky um this is kind of an interesting choice for the seven of pentacles too because it's sort of like hard work paying off is i think like this the basic interpretation that i think they want um although i don't know if you're supposed to sort of focus on this drake in the front here who is like looking at a participant medal and feeling like maybe one day I could become an Altador Cup all-star like these ones. I don't know. <laughs> but there's some Neopets drama for you. Uh, uh, this is Donnie, who is a toy fixer. Uh, occasionally when you're playing with toys, your Neopets can break them and you can take them to him to fix it uh, on Terror Mountain, which despite its name, is not especially terrifying. It's just like the the snow world, you know what I mean? <laughs> the Christmas world is in Happy Valley and at the base of the mountain, and then there's like the mountain at the top, and there's these ice caves in the middle. Yeah. Um, very appropriate. Very cute. I like it. <laughs> Staying on Terror Mountain, here we have another fairy who is Talia. She is the Terror Mountain fairy... Um, this is kind of interesting. Like, I don't know how I would... I suppose it kind of... I suppose it makes sense. Like, it's not that it doesn't make sense or anything like that. It's just kind of, you know... 
I I imagine that for a lot of these, they're they're probably like, well, they want to have the character, and so they're putting them in this situation, and the card looks like looks enough like the Rider Waite Smith that you can read it anyway, and I guess that's kind of what this is about, which is fine. Like it's a pretty pretty little card. Okay, and this is the Ten of Pentacles. On Neopets, uh, you can abandon your Neopet and adopt others, um, and all the Neopets that have been abandoned are available for adoption from other people. Uh, this is the figure who runs the adopt the pound, is what it's called, and this is Dr. Death, <laughs> and he, um, you know... And, and this is another character who runs the adoption center. Basically, he runs the abandoned center, she runs the adoption center, and then this hissy in the middle runs the transfer center, which is basically like if you just want to send a Neopet to another person without um, abandoning and adopting. So uh, very, very cute, very interesting choice for the Ten of Pentacles because you kind of have like the reversed meaning like the opposite reversed meaning it's kind of cool <laughs> the page of pentacles okay so this in the background is the neg fairy yes we literally have a fucking neg fairy i would say that she's like the easter bunny except she's not because we actually have a character who is like the easter bunny <laughs> um <laughs> okay so the thing about negs is that each of these eggs, each each of the Neopets eggs, has different uh, qualities, and many of them can increase your Neopets uh, battle dome stats. So that's why a lot of people will use them. And you can there's like this whole thing where you can bring eggs in and trade up to different eggs, and that's kind of her primary job. I can't remember if that was her job or her job. I don't know who she is, but yeah, there you <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. Oh my god. This this is my guy. This is my absolute favorite Neopets character of all time. I love him. I love him so much. When I was a kid, I had a fucking crush on him because I was that kind of kid. This is Tormund Ellis, who is... <laughs> he is a knight of Meridel. He, he grew up on a farm out in um in the Mary Acre farms and he wanted more than anything to become a Meridel knight and this is his um this is his father's wooden sword and this is just so cute it's so cute it's such a good it's such a good uh, like a well composed card i love the lighting on it i love the colors Oh my god. So he's like sitting here sort of before his adventure starts where he he eventually does become a great knight of Meridel. This is like the whole plot of the Darkest Fairy video game. And so this is him like at the beginning of his journey when his father finally gave him his blessing to go off and become a knight because at first his father was like, no, I'm not going to let you leave the farm. I'm not going to let you, you know, leave and whatever. But through an act of bravery in which he rescued his sister after she wandered off into the woods, then his father basically gave his final blessing and was like, okay, I can see you really want to do this. I can see that you, you know, will take care of yourself. I'm going to let you go. And so this is like him at the beginning of that journey. And that's very appropriate for the Knight of Pentacles. I think and it's so sweet. Oh my god. I love this so much. I love Tormund Ellis. This is Princess Amira, who is the... <clears throat> she is the uh, princess who I was talking about earlier in the Lover's Card. Uh the one who Jazan wanted to marry, but then she said, hell no. So I think that's kind of appropriate to make her a queen in general as like the very, you know, self-assured, self-confident um, character, you know, who's in control of her own life and her own destiny and her own marriage. Like that feels like that feels good for the Queen of Pentacles. I like it. And this is King Skarl. He is the king of Meridel. Um, I am a King Skarl sympathizer, okay? Like, this picture um, portrays him perhaps at his greediest. Uh, <laughs> but I really...
really do think that he is like, um, he is a war hardened King who, you know, he, he has dealt with like a ridiculous amount of war and, um, poverty and famine and stuff. And so like the reason that he needs all this treasure is not for, um, you know, just for himself. It's for conscript, conscript, conscripting knights. Is that the word? Whatever. It's for, it's for, it's for war. It's for battle and for knights. And, um, anyway, yeah, he's a good King of Pentacles. I like it. Cool. Okay, so this is the Ace of Cups, and she is the healing fairy. Basically, in the battle, do like your Neopet has hit points, and uh, when they fight in the battle dome, then they lose hit points, and you can take her, take them to her, uh, to heal them. And I, I really like this as the Ace of Cups actually, because I think that um, the healing springs is sort of about opportunity. And, um, you kind of never know what you're going to get where sometimes she'll fully heal and sometimes it'll like her, her magic only works in bursts basically. So sometimes you'll get a full heal. Sometimes you get lesser things, but it's like anything that she does, she's always going to do her best to help you. And something about that feels appropriate for the Ace of Cups. I mean, I suppose the Ace of Cups is supposed to be like all emotions, but I don't know, whatever. I don't know how much I'm actually going to use this deck very seriously either anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so this is Bryn and Hanso. Bryn is a knight of Bright Veil, which is the Renaissance world. Hanso is a thief, and uh, they were involved in a plot together um, called the Fairy's Ruin, which is basically the whole plot where Fairyland crashed down from the clouds. And I'm going to say... <laughs> I honestly feel like these two characters are just ship bait. Like, they were there so that people could ship them. Which is fine, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And I love Brynn, I love her design, I love Kugra's, so, you know, she was my favorite. Um, but yeah, like... <laughs> like, it, it definitely felt a lot like this uh, Disney movie Tangled, <laughs> that whole plot. Oh man! <laughs> okay, so the Three of Cups, this is a band, a canonical band in the uh, Neopets universe called the Hikalakas, and I, uh, I liked them very much. They're these band, these like in-world bands that play different concerts. My favorite is the Twisted Roses. I actually got a poster of the Twisted Roses too, <laughs> because I couldn't help myself. I love them. They're like the goth band obviously. Um, but the Hikalakas are the, you know, Mystery Island um, steel band. And I always had sort of a special fondness for them because fun fact about me is that I know how to play the steel drums. And I was in a steel drum band for um, like 10 years when I was a kid, uh, like kid through teenager. So yeah, like that was, that was sweet. And they, they play steel drums in their band. So yep, seems like a nice relaxed, good set of characters for that. Okay, so this is the Duchess, and she is basically, like, the leader of a, I guess, like, a cult. I suppose it's, like, a secret society. I don't know. But she's the leader of the Sway. They're involved in the battlegrounds. Again, like, I feel like there's just not enough plot for the characters behind the battlegrounds. Or at least I don't know enough about it. Maybe I need to remind myself. Um, but, you know, she's a very popular character. I think that... I think that it's perhaps a strange choice for the Four of Cups because if she is dismissive, it's in a very, like, villainous kind of, like, get that out of my face kind of way, not in a, in a tired way. And I suppose that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with depicting annoyance in the Four of Cups. <laughs> Oh, Bruno. Okay, so this is the Five of Cups. This takes place in the Victorian world of Neovia. And um, it's basically like a Jekyll and Hyde thing where he falls for a snake oil salesman um, because he wants to be strong so that he can um, impress 
someone that he loves and potentially marry her, and then it transforms him into this hideous beast. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a fun little plot, and I think that is I think this is pretty cute, and he definitely is like a tragic story, so it makes sense. Just got a little crap on the. There we go. It's not a scratch. It's just you know, leftover paper. And this is Jilly, who is the uh, character who basically acts as like the introduction uh, character, like in the Neverending Story or something. She's the one who sort of discovered um, uh, discovered the discovered Neovia. So that's cool. Kind of an odd choice of cup, I think, but you know, it's good. <laughs> it's kind of interesting to see like a dark um, area on a six of cups. They're definitely going with the, the haunted woods here. This is Sophie who is, you know, a witch <laughs> in the woods and I love her very much. She has one of my favorite games on the site, which you can't play anymore because it was a flash game, but it was, um, it was called Sophie's Stew. Basically you play as her wand and she like throws, she's throwing a bunch of stuff into her pot. And so, um, these, like she, each of these is like a different ingredient that she would throw into her pot. And then your job was to play as her wand and like move the item until it bounced move the wand so that it would catch the item until it bounced into the pot. One of my favorites really like this and certain like, you know what I really appreciate about all of these, um, all these miners is like, I feel like the, the setting is integrated super well. You know, they didn't just pick some random character and then give them seven random cups that had the RWS symbols in it. Like, they really worked hard about integrating Neopets canon and Neopets lore and story into, into this deck. Like, you can tell that the people, the people who worked on this deck are probably both Neopets fans and Tarot fans, and that is that is excellent. That is all that I could ever ask from a fan deck, you know what I mean? So this is the Grey Fairy, and she is the one fairy who does not have any magic of her own. Um, I think that this is kind of interesting as like a, a way of not wallowing in your own sadness and not wallowing in your own sorrow, but... Um, rather working with the other fairies. And it's kind of interesting because when, when fairyland crashed to the ground, then like, um, you know, she couldn't be in fairyland before cause she didn't have wings and she didn't have magic. But like when it crashed to the ground, then suddenly, you know, she has this community now that she can rely on. So it's just kind of interesting. <laughs> so this is the shopkeeper of the Neopets coffee shop and each of these items that she has in front of her are very classic um <laughs> so the mug that she's holding here is for is a mug of Boravan and Boravan is one of the sort of Neopets um classic items and Boravan it's a uh, hot chocolate and asparagus <laughs> Have yet to try it myself, but I hear that it's quite delightful. <laughs> At least, like within the, with the within the site, there's like a whole a whole Boravan day. It's a whole thing. Um, yeah, very cute, very sweet. I like it. <laughs> oh, and then the Ten of Cups. So this is the Rainbow Fountain, and it is run by the Rainbow Fairy, who basically every now and then, very rarely, she will grant a quest. And if you fulfill that quest, she will allow you to take your Neopet to her pool and paint it any color that you want. So Neopet's paintbrushes are very highly sought after to paint your Neopet in like a specialty color. And as you can see, like here's some of them. You have a, a pastel is one of the priciest colors. Plushy is one of the priciest and fanciest colors. And then this is a pet pet who is unrelated, but it represents fairy, which is one of the 
priciest colors. And yeah, I think this is a very good 10 of cups. I love how the cup design changes each time. Like here they use actual Neopets items. Here they used, um, you know, just like a, a teardrop shaped goblet cup, which is really cool. Here they have, you know, the gray fairy cup. It's really very nice. <laughs> Uh, this is Hannah, who is like an adventurer in the um, in the Terror Mountain world. Um, like, okay, I say that, and I know that it seems like she's just a ripoff of Anna from Frozen, but if anything, Anna from Frozen is a ripoff of Hannah, because Hannah has been around way longer. <laughs> Hannah's been around for a very long time, and then in the background we have her little sidekick, Armin, who I always liked very much, and she is a... She's originally from Croc Island, which is like the pirate world, um, and she has like a few games and is part of a few plots and is another very classic character. This is Canrick the Thief, um, who I actually don't remember what he's involved in. I know that he is... No, 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 no. I'm not thinking of Canrick. Okay. I can't remember if it's Canrick or if it's someone else who is one of the, um, one of the other Altador guides. I think I'm thinking of Kel Kel Kelland or something. I don't remember. But he's here. <laughs> um, sort of interesting to use a character who's not known for being a, you know, hopeless romantic um, for the Knight of Cups. But I think, I mean, I bet that there's like a good explanation. Not that I'm like, you need an explanation for this, but you know, I bet that they have a good reasoning for it. This is the Soup Fairy, which is a fairy who runs a soup kitchen, which is basically similar to the giant omelet, but it's uh, Neopoints based. So if you have less than a certain amount of the in-game currency, then you can feed your pets there for free. And as, you know, as a kid, <laughs> I definitely tried to like game the system so that I could keep my money under a certain amount so I could feed my pets there for free, which is kind of ridiculous given how many, how many free ways there were to get food in the game. But, you know, definitely like a part of Neopets culture is, is gaming your, your system, gaming the system for soup fairy money. Um, and this is one of the other, uh, only like one of the only other human ish representations, but it's not really known whether he's actually human-ish or whether he's just kind of like a sentient mask creature um but he runs tombola which is you know basically tombola is a british word i think it just it's like a general term i don't know but basically like um you get a you get to pull a free ticket and sometimes you get an item and it's just a, like a really fun daily activity that lots of people do Maybe I should have warned you guys to get ready for a fucking hour and a half video because, like, this is is going to be that very clear. I mean, you could probably tell from, like, the very first card was that this is going to be a very long video. Um, here we have the Ace of Swords, and it is being held up by Jaron. Jaron is the Meridel Knight, another great character, and um, he is he's kind of like... Um, He's he he's very similar to Tormund Ellis. Tormund Ellis sees Jaron as like a great hero and wants to be a lot like him. And uh he is ultimately like the uh the hero who who defeated um Lord Cass, who is another villain in uh the Meridel world. Meridel is one of the earliest worlds and they definitely had a couple of <laughs> they had multiple war plots um that were involved. And, yeah, so it's a good one. I don't know that he's especially known for being an intellectual or whatever you would associate with the swords, but, you know, it's it's good. It's solid. <laughs> Pretty setting. I like it. I, I would be... <laughs> I would be happy with just all Meridel stuff, because I love Meridel very, very much. Um, let's see. The Two of Swords. These two are, um basically the um the trainers so in order to increase your neopets stats then you have to go to different parts of the uh world to like train their stats and so this is the part that you can go to on the pirate island croc island and this is the 
character you can go to on the uh, Mystery Island. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting to see them fighting. Like, um, I don't know that I have ever pictured either of them interacting ever. So this is kind of like, feels like a crossover. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Um, I don't know that this totally conforms with the classic Rider Waite Smith interpretation of the cards but let's see let me just see what they have here what do they say about the two of swords um they have different strengths but they are an equal match for each other the battle does not have a clear winner and neither is willing to surrender the two of swords is a choice where there is no obvious answer Okay, so it's sort of meant to be, like, two competing forces where um, there's not a clear outcome. Like, I guess I can kind of see that. It's, it's a unique interpretation, like, genuinely. Um, kind of interesting. <laughs> All right, a good classic Three of Swords, and then these items are um, three different items. This is Elucent's sword, who is this character. This is Judora's sword. Judora is basically like the dark fairy um, counterpart to Elucent. Um, they are rivals. They live near each other, and um, a lot of people ship them. <laughs> and then this here, what is this? Like the Blade of Fire and Ice or something? I know it's like a super old, super rare item. Incredibly expensive. I don't know that I would have picked that one personally, just if for no other reason than purely for the aesthetic reasons, because this is kind of a weird combination, but, you know, it's a three of swords, what you gonna do? Okay, yeah, so this is the thief I was thinking about from Altador. This is Kelland, um, and he features in the uh, Neopets Darkest Fairy game as, like, a mysterious benefactor who is trying to lay low so that he doesn't get targeted by the Darkest Fairy, who is the villain in the game, um, and helps you by um, granting you a magical amulet thingy. And uh, he's basically, like, a Robin Hood character. Um, this is from when he was in the Altador plot, which is basically, like, he used to be this great hero and he's he's been laying low so i guess that's i guess that kind of makes sense for the four of swords too is like specifically laying low after combat after a battle after you know after a lot of um drama but knowing that there's a lot more to come kind of interesting especially with the ultimate release of the darkest fairy <laughs> yay another maridel card okay so this is the beginning of a plot called champions for uh champions of maridel and Basically, it takes place in the future, um, and they have to go back, or rather, it takes place in the present, and then they have to go back in time to fix something <laughs> in in one of, in a battle with um, in a in a in an old battle, and so these characters are all basically cosplaying <laughs> and and playing pretend, and they just got bullied by a bunch of big jocks and um so we have morris boris leisha and kayla uh young kayla here is kayla all grown up and they are a group of kids that are ultimately heroes it's kind of interesting that like it seems like they you know they definitely had a battle of sorts but like despite the fact that these are the ones retreating they're clearly the ones who lost like they the b bullies came in bullied them and then left and so the battle ultimately took more out of them than it did out of the ones who were retreating it's kind of interesting <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so this is the side drake's gaze this is that flying ship from earlier and um the reason that I'm laughing is because this is clearly at the beginning of the plot because this is the navigator slash cartographer who ultimately gets pushed off the ship by Bonju the chef. So it's kind of funny because it's like 
it's like saying that, yeah, right now everything's cool, everyone's resting, but ultimately, like, you get, you know, there's more battles to come, there's more things that are gonna happen, which kind of makes sense for the placement in the suit, you know, for being just a six. Okay, who is this? Valen? Oh, I don't remember. I'm starting to, like, reach some of my brain limits here. <laughs> what is his name? Valen! Valen, I was right! V-A-L-I-N, Valen. Valen the Quick has struck again, an expert thief. So, uh, this is the Snowager in the background, who is this giant ice worm dragon who has a hoard of treasure, and he hibernates, um... And when he hibernates, then you have a chance of going in and trying to steal something at the risk of waking him up and getting hurt. Um, so yeah, this guy definitely trusts in his own abilities and trusts in his sneakiness. Okay, so these guys are part of a uh, Croc Island plot, The Curse of Maracqua, which is their underwater world. The character in the front here is Jacques, this is Jacques, and then this is Garen, and uh, there Jacques basically becomes the uh, gentleman in distress um, character. <laughs> this is clearly is like earlier on when they're just kind of like in their uh, swashbuckling pirate fighting stage, and not like the main portion of the plot. I think. <laughs> um, So I, it's kind of interesting because, like, in, in this case, it seems like they are actually surrounded. Where, like, the Eight of Swords, like, you're always surrounded, but the it's, it's rarely an actual threat. Whereas this seems to be more actualized threats that now they have to fight their way out of instead of just, like, see their way out of. It's kind of interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a card game that they have uh, called Cheat. It's a really genuinely fun card game. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it at some point, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's sort of a goal where it's like, if you want to become a cheat champion, you have to defeat all of the other card players, um, the card sharks. <laughs> so this is funny because it's like you're kind of getting this is like you're getting caught cheating in the game um which is like a or like even just worried about getting caught cheating which is really funny so it's like again it's like an actual genuine anxiety um which is cool okay let me see if i can remember the names of these uh of these characters we've got chuffer bob little timmy um, Brucey B. I think that's Calvara. Um, Princess Fernie Poo. Double O Hog. And I don't think that I can remember these three. But that's not too bad for having not played Cheat in a really long time. <laughs> Oh, and the Ten of Swords. So this is the game Graveyard. And back when, um, okay, this is kind of sad. <laughs> like, so back in Neopets' heyday, a lot of their games were Flash games. They were built with Flash, which is now not supported. Sorry, I'm yawning. I've just been talking for like, you know, an hour and ten minutes. The Flash is not supported anymore online, and so a lot of the games are now no longer playable. And this Ten of Swords was the original set of games where there were a series of games that were basically updated, where, um, you know, Doubloon Disaster had, like, its original, and then they revamped it and, and spiffed it up. And so then the original version of Doubloon Disaster was still playable via the game Graveyard. I really got it. And so, uh, of course, any other games that were retired just were sent to the game graveyard. And this is kind of sad now because really, like, every game should be in the game graveyard right now. Which, yeah, that kind of hurts. So that's, a, that's a good ten of sorts things. You know, the good, wonderful, fun things that all have to die at some point. 
Okay. Okay. I feel awful because I cannot remember either of these characters. I do know that she is like a Dr. Sloth aligned villain and she is a member of the Grundo Resistance in the uh, Virtue Pets space station, and that's about all I know. And we're going to call that good, because clearly i got to start wrapping up here. This is Lord Cass. Um, he is the direct antagonist to Jaron here. Um, I suppose, yeah, that makes sense. Like, he is very deliberate. He's very cutting. He's very... Uh, He's a lot more, like, directed and less, um, cunning than Lord Derrigan. Um, like, he's a lot more active and action-oriented, and that makes sense for the knight, I think, very well. Beautiful card. Isn't this so cool? Like, this one just looks really, really good. <laughs> really excellently done. Okay, so this is young... Sophie. Oh, I am sorry. This is young Sophie, and Sophie was the um, witch from the Seven of Cups. Um, and she is in the same universe as uh, Bruno from the Five of Cups. And this is a fairy who lives in the Haunted Woods named Theala, I think was her name. No, no, no. Sh shoot. Uh, this was... The one that started with an I that I can't remember the name of exactly. What started with an I? Ilara, who was part of the Tale of Woe plot, as they revealed the, uh, the um, like, Neovian Victorian world, <laughs> which is pretty cool. It this card probably looks a little bit dark on camera, but it's actually. It's pretty good in person. Some of these sway a little bit dark, but that's okay. Here is King Hagen, who is definitely um, meant to be the more wise, just, balanced king, and so that's probably why they have him as the King of Swords as sort of a foil to King Skarl as the King of Pentacles. Makes sense. And the wands. Okay. So this is Leisha. I... Love her very much. She is the little sister of Jaron Meridel Knight. <laughs> and she features very heavily in the Champions of Meridel. And she is just so cute. And there's like this really cute picture of Jaron giving Leisha a really big hug once they're all rescued and the war is over. And it's just really sweet and really fun. So yeah, I think that she is sort of representing like the youthful new ideas um, and like the new energy of sort of the future oriented people going back and writing the past. <laughs> okay, this is Nigel. Obviously, this is Nigel, the stockbroker Chia. So, yeah, so there is a stock market. And I actually really like the Neopet stock market because it's kind of a joke. Because, like, the stocks, the value of the stock, of every stock, is entirely randomly determined. There is absolutely no rhyme or reason to it. Like, you can sort of figure out that... Is probably not going to plummet by, like, hundreds of points at a time. But it's just... I just think it's funny that, like, the Neopets stock market is, like, entirely meaningless because it kind of just talks about, yeah, the real-world stock market is entirely meaningless. We have just decided that all of these have meaning. <laughs> um... So, so I suppose what's kind of funny then, using this for the Two of Wands, is that it means that there is, that like any, any direction is good and that you can never predict what the outcome is going to be regardless of what direction you pick, which is honestly a genuinely good reminder for me. <laughs> oh, here we have the Three of Wands. Um, this is Governor Someone Someone. He is, like, the governor on Croc Island, and he is trying to protect the island from a giant squid, because apparently the island is actually not a true island. It's a roving island that is literally just weighed down by a bunch of chains and weights, and so occasionally you have big 
<sighs> big sea monsters coming to coming to crash and, and then like break at it. So he's watching the ships go off to try and uh, protect the island, uh, which is really interesting because it means that like his value is not in like uh, treasure hunting; it is in uh, safety and protection. It's kind of an interesting thought. Okay, so uh, this is this is an interesting set of cards. I don't know if this, I don't know where when exactly this takes. I swear to God, is she holding an iPad? She's holding a fucking iPad. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, I clearly do not know what this is all about. <laughs> But uh, this is a depiction of Maradell with a visitor from Terrania and the uh, Emperor of Shenku. And that's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> the reason I'm so shocked that she's holding an iPad is because Neopets, like, is within the lore. They're pretty strict about, like, uh, a very limited technology. <laughs> so I wouldn't have thought that they would give them an iPad. Okay, so the Five of Wands, these are all siblings. Or I don't know if they're all siblings, but these two are definitely siblings. This is um, AAA, who, and uh, his sister Abigail. And then there's Chadley, um, whatever her name is, Clarissa or something. And then uh uh, Ruthless, who is, like, the antagonist to King Rue, which is, like, the the fun and games area. Um, and basically there was a challenge that used to go called Daily Dare, where basically each of the, um, each of the siblings would dare you, the player, to, uh, beat their score in a particular game. And these were sort of some guests, guest stars that came around on that event. That was a really fun event. Man, I miss Daily Dare so much. I miss all the Flash games. I really genuinely miss those. Okay, so this is Roberta. And she is a... Um, she is a disciple of uh, Serendar the... Um, Serendak? Now I'm, like, getting tired. And I'm kind of forgetting his name. But the, the Magician. She's a disciple of the Magician. And she is the... Um, primary uh, support. I guess she's like the secondary character of the uh, Neopets the Darkest Fairy along with Tormund Ellis from the Knight of Pentacles. So it's kind of nice to see her too. Um, and I totally know that the, her her steed here has a name and I'm just not going to be able to remember it right now. But yeah, like she does become a great hero for Bright Vale and ultimately you know, prove her worth as a grand sorceress. And I think this is really sweet. This is a very cute, sweet six of wands. And it definitely reflects how I felt beating the <laughs> darkest fairy game. Cause holy crap, when you're a kid, the end of that game is so, so fucking hard. Oh man. Uh, this is Rishu who is, um, like one of the like ninjas from the ninja training school and it's a long story but uh i think what he's meant to be doing here is to defend the training school from those who are defend like the the secret super high level training school from those who have not reached that high level yet um yeah i really like the perspective on this one i really like the sort of hold the line thing that they're doing like it, it okay so sometimes in the seven of wands it feels like they're not actually defending anything there's nothing behind them that there's any reason for them to be fighting or doing anything this one's like there actually is something there that he's trying to protect which is kind of cool this is florin who is basically like the god of agriculture as far as i can tell i don't know if he's literally a god but he is one of the protectors of altador and he features very heavily in the altador plot i like him very much, and I he also features in the um, uh, Darkest Fairy video game. Uh, there's a whole book item that's like windmills and how they work. <laughs> it's it's features him. And it's like yeah, this is a very cute, a very cute Eight of Wands. Um, 
for whatever reason, like, I totally can't remember what the Eight of Wands usually looks like. Oh, right, right, right. The Eight of Wands is like that one that I hate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds awful. But like the Eight of Wands is that Rider Waite Smith one where I just never get on with it because it never has a character in it. It's just like the the wands. Um so this is kind of interesting because it's certainly you wouldn't really think of agriculture as being like swiftness. Um actually I'm really curious. I wanna see what it says in the guidebook about about this one. Florin the farmer stands in a wheat field. Um, sacrifice to save the town's harvest earned him a spot as one of the 12 heroes of Altador. Um, bundles of leaves behind his ears symbol the growth. Uh, time of tremendous momentum and potential. One ripe with growth, one barren, ready to be planted. Okay, so they seem to be talking about, like, like momentum and forward motion and, like, keeping it going. And, and so, like, the act of saving the plots was sort of about, like, continuing continuing the motion and, like, continuing to plow, continuing to work. So it's I actually kind of like that as an eight. I think that the eights are, are a lot more stable... And so I feel like this almost makes sen more sense numerically than the classic Eight of Wands where it's about, like, um, swift uh, messaging or swift deliverance of sort. This is really, like, it's continuing momentum and continuing, continuing your work. And, um, like... I don't know. Like it, it, it's a, it's a, I like it. I, I like it. Maybe I just like the image, honestly, and the character. But I like the concept of like trying to depict momentum in different ways. Ah, <laughs> okay. So this is a uh, the princess of Shenku, and she is a mountain climber. And there was this game that I really loved, and I think it was just what was it called? Shenku Mountain Rush or something like that. Where basically like you try to, you try to climb the mountain as high as you can. Um, I think this is really sweet. I think it's like, like she's still trying and she, she doesn't want to give up. And that's the whole idea of the Nine of Wands is that you don't want to give up. You're not, you don't want to give up your position. You don't want to give up what you've worked for and you don't want to give up your, ideas in your dream. And I think this totally works. I love it. Holy crap. And again, it's like, there's not exactly much place to rest. You can't just sit there and you can't exact, you can't rest very easy on the side of a mountain in this way. Like, I love this one. Okay. So this is the sorceress that I was talking about earlier. Jordana, who is another one of the, um, Heroes of Altador, and in this case, she is um, participating in the Altador plot by like trying to chart the stars. And like, there's one way in which e each of the stars is sort of represents a different um, member of the council, uh, or like a, a member of the protectors of Altador, the Council of Altador. And um, so, this is kind of interesting because it's like it is a very big undertaking. And she does need to find all of those, um, oh wait, oh my god, I totally just got distracted. I'm just like really curious, how do they represent the wands in this one? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Could you say that there are nine peaks? I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry, I just got like completely, completely distracted. Um... Yeah, so it's like, it's a very difficult task and it's a notoriously difficult part of the plot um, that requires a lot of persistent work and it's very easy to get lost and, and have difficulties during that during this part of the plot. And this is the one that is like, because the map is different for every player, there's no way to cheat it. Like, you have to do it yourself. And so I just think that's very interesting of like having to take on a personal burden Um in a way that can't really be lifted by other people and like how much of that burden is something that you need to take on versus want to take on. Like, I don't know. There's a, it, 
that's very interesting. I think this is a good choice. I think it's kind of interesting that they chose the Ten of Wands to be on the front. Like, usually they choose a, you know, one of the majors, like, High Priestess Magician Fool or something. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Okay, this is Judora. She is, like, the main foil to Elucin over here. Um, she is one of the, one of the fan favorites. Page of Wands is kind of interesting. Like, um, I don't actually know that much about, like, Judora lore. Um, if she really has much lore behind her. So I'll definitely have to kind of read, read this one. I kind of like her as a page. I have to, I have to remember who Elucin was. Oh, it's gotta be in the other, the other stack. I gotta see who Elucin was. Was Elucin the page of, um, something? The page of, no, oh, Elucin was strength. That's right. Okay. So they're not necessarily like partners or anything. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's cool. Rockstone Colchester the <laughs> Third. I I probably sound like I'm having a fucking stroke. Um, this is a like an adventurer character who was part of the um, Moltara quest line, and the Moltara is basically like the steampunk world because. You have to remember when this, when Neopets was popular, uh, steampunk was also kind of popular, and so they made a steampunk world, and he's the one who kind of discovered it. And that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, yay! They did have Calvara. They have her as the Queen of Wands. This is Calvara. She is a, a potion brewer, and she is known for making morphing potions, which are basically like, if you want to change your Neopets species, as opposed to just their color, then you need a morphing potion. And, um, she is, like, a classic. She is one of the classic shopkeepers in Neopets. Like, you have to have Calvara. <laughs> and so I'm very, very happy that they had her. You heard me mention her, like, three times. Um, yeah. Cool. I love it. Very cute. Her fucking black cat, it's a Kadoti, is the name of the pet pet species. And it's like, yep, it's good. It's good art. It's beautiful. I love it. Perfect, perfect. Oh, 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 they had to have done this on purpose to, like, organize it so that King Coltsan was last. This is King Coltsan. He is, like, the original fabled king. Well, not fabled, he was actual, but, you know, he was, like, the original king of the Lost Desert, and he has a shrine, uh, which is Coltsan Shrine, and where, you know, you can speak to his ghost, and, um... I just think that's really cute to have the King of Wands as basically, like, an ancestor. Like, a very, very early character within the lore. I just... I just really love it. <laughs> it's perfect. It's like a perfect finale, perfect conclusion. It's great. And then they have, like, this little card that has, uh... Oh, the, uh, credits... Credits the artists for the, uh, different suits. And the producer and the guidebook. And yeah, it's fabulous! <laughs> Man. Okay, so, like, to be honest, because I had to wait for this deck for such a long time, there were a few times where I was starting to regret it a little bit, starting to be like, do I really need to spend my money on this, like, fan collectible thing for something from when I was a kid? And it's like, I, I'm glad that I did now. Like, I just have had such a good time remembering all these different parts of Neopia and remembering these different characters and talking about them. And I am genuinely curious to see if I can read with it. But, like, to be perfectly honest, I do not expect to read with this. Yep, that's a fine shuffle. It'll be... It'll... I can tell it'll break in a little bit, you know? Um... So I guess the verdict on this deck is that uh, if you like Neopets, and if you like Tarot, and if you want to have a collectible of both, then go for it. Otherwise, I don't know that you're really going to get a whole lot out of it, because I think that like 90% of the fun is just like seeing all of the different characters in, in these different 
cards and and seeing the art. It's almost like collecting an art book of classic Neopets figures, classic Neopets art. You know, that's what this is for me, and I'm happy to have it. <laughs> God, I'm such a fucking dork. Holy crap. I really want to try and pull a card from it just to say goodbye, because um, I feel like I need a suitably interesting ending or like a suit suitably satisfying ending for anyone who literally watched me talk about Neopets for 90 minutes. Not even like the website, but just Neopets lore. <laughs> okay. I am... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we have a flip. We got a flip over. Yep, this is me right now. <laughs> the fucking five of pentacles. I am, I am tired. I'm exhausted. I need to just go and like revel in my fan enjoyment and go and fucking play some Neopets. <laughs> yeah, um, thanks for joining me if you did. I need some water. I will talk to you later. <laughs> Goodbye.